them at that time. That's what. The, that's the way. It, that's what it is. It shall be hidden from them at that time. The word of God shall be hidden from them at that time. So the emergency about Christ coming soon and how it is to be righteous, it will be hidden from them at that time. Glory to God. And that has nothing to do with whether you're in church or not. It has to do with being in the word being in Christ, being in covenant, walking in truth, walking in holiness. You will know the unctioning of the Holy Ghost, the time in which we're living in. We bless God. As we get ready, once again, for you won't you listen to me cinema we're gonna run to uh-huh. cinema we're gonna run to uh-huh. if you run to the rock go hide yourself the rock want to hide in place for itself the run to the to hide yourself, the sea want to hide in place for itself. See the man, we're gonna run to. Uh-huh. See the man, we're gonna run to. Uh-huh. Who is the man who lived long on the earth and don't know that God is the giver of life? Who is the man who often reproved and hard in his heart and stiff in his neck? See the man. Mark of the beast, and then you're gonna ball out hell be please. You go through life as a sinner when judgment comes, you're gonna burn in a fire. You're a sinner man. Indeed. We're you gonna run to as we climb to the top of the hour. Sinner man. And of course, every first um, Saturday, for those who pay attention, we have Pastor Fodin and taking the time off to come here every, every morning. You hear him right here on Choice Radio at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he's here with us today. And Choice Radio, as always, come in and share one hour with us and answering our questions as it relates to the Bible and the Word of God. And I must tell you, this man has been my motivation. He has been the one that have brought me to a place to love the Word of God like this, the way he turned the pages and go into it. And I was, <laughs> glory to God. And I thank Jesus to bring me among a man like this who speak, thus said the Lord, according to the Word of God, always quoting a scripture. Pastor, welcome, welcome, welcome to Choice Radio. You might not know it. I probably don't say it enough. I don't say it. But anyhow, you have been a, a, the, the man that have brought me to a place to fall in love with the Word of God. Give me a scripture. <laughs> Show me. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, let's thank God first for this Glory opportunity and privilege. Thank Him for His Son, Jesus Christ, who make all this possible. Oh, we can't do it by ourselves. We're not that smart. Paul, who wrote most of the New Covenant, said, we know in part, we prophesy in part, we see through our glass eyes. So we don't know it all. We're highlighting a few things here and there, and we hope when we come to a conclusion of this one hour, we are able to stimulate thought and excite mental faculties. Yet you do some serious thing in the Word of God. is more to the Word of God in the Lord's Prayer in the 23rd Psalm. Well, a scripture I'll give you, my favorite scripture is, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Every why go I think about that and we don't dumb stupid thing that we didn't know our life because we didn't know. Yes. We didn't know. If we had only known somebody was in our lives early, a serious person, our uncle, aunt, a mother, father, was there to give us information, we'll save ourselves all the dumb and stupid things that we did, you know. But thank God in the process of time we got a little bit of sense. And we learned to turn the corner and come this way and you know that way is the bad way, this is the right way. So that scripture for me is always mine and you come into my office, you sit in front of the door, there, my people are destroyed Try for a lack, lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. You know, get in front. Then you say people, but my people were destroyed. So I'm very pleased that God will show me a few things here and there and I'm always learning, looking for more and asking him for more, show me some things that, you know, that I can be a better person. That when it comes towards the end of the time, a hundred years from now, all of us are going to be a next life experience. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we'll hear what you have to say to us then, and you'll be giving out your rewards to all those who did very good. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You did everything you could with what you had. 
So I'm just looking forward to um, we have been here today and answer some questions. I understand you was talking about the marriage and how important it is and emphasize that very important. If you're going to do a ministry or start a ministry, you should first start with the home because it start first in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, then the uttermost parts of the world. Or say, if you don't know how to run your house, how are you going to take care of it? If you can't love your wife, how are you going to love people that you don't know? So you should start and uh, be an example to your family first, exemplify what love is all about, what God put in you, then you can pass to the congregation. And use that as the 12 inches. And marriage is the most important decision you're going to make in your life is getting married. Before from that, going to come children. And those children are going to either be on this side or that side. They're either going to be a blessing to society or be a curse to society. They're either be a liability or an asset. So the most important decision you make in your life is who you're going to get married to. Because when you come before the man of God or wherever you take your vows, you swear to love each other for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, and sickness, until death do us part. So you're making a lifetime decision. So it's not a thing that you take very lightly that you can get in there after four or five years you want out of it and it's not working out. No, you should seek the face of God and find out who is this person, who is this man, who is this woman. Take some time. If it, if I hope saying you'll, you need for one year, it's worth it. Stay there because once you make that and children get involved in the middle of it, um, it's no way to go. You have to stay there. You make a, you, you swear. Then you could look at a scripture from the book of um, Mark. Here is John the Baptist made a statement to, to Herod and tell him it's not right that he should have his brother wife Philip. And here Herod, his daughter, danced before him and he pleased him and he said, I'm going to give you half the kingdom. So he said, you're going to give her half the kingdom. I said, what should I ask? She asked the mother. She said, well, ask for the head of John the Baptist. And here Herod was very saddened by that request that she made for the head of John the Baptist. But here is this ungodly king saying he couldn't pull back his word because of his oath. And the people who were there sitting around there, all his high lord and high estate were sitting around the table with him. So he couldn't pull his word back and say, well, I changed my mind about that half the kingdom. Ask for something else. So he had to, his, he was a slave to his words. And he couldn't pull it back, so he said, and get John the Baptist and cut off his head. Well, here is an ungodly king who couldn't pull back his word. What about you as a godly person who swear to love each other till death goes part for better or for worse, for richer and poor till death goes part? But then God will bring that up before you. He will say, here's an ungodly king. He's a slave to his words. He's not going to pull it back because of the people who sit there. Well, when you get married, you have many witnesses. And mm-hmm. you swear in front of those witnesses that you're going to love each other till they don't part. But somehow, two, three years into it, you're talking about you want to go to the left and you want to go to the right, you want to go up and you want to go down. Then you go, God going to bring back this ungodly king. He's not even saved. But he's a slave to his word. He said, I can't pull it back because all these people here, here when I swear that I'll give you half the kingdom, and you ask for head, did you, the head of John the Baptist, so I have to be a slave to my words. What do you want to say? My God. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Because that, that's that's an important revelation about the cloud of weakness. Yeah. You know, because you go before the host of heaven and you're telling God that this is the one that I want you to anoint for me. Mm-hmm. This is the one that I want you to, to sanctify for me. This is the one that I bring before you. And you make that decision. So the host of heaven is looking yes. and people are looking. Everybody's looking and they're looking at you, what you said you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And now you get out there. So it's bigger than just you and I just, you know, we get upset about something and whatever no we have the host of heaven to let them know what we told you we mean it we're yeah. going to go through with it so and we have an advocate with the father which is in heaven right. so if something go wrong we can always say jesus right. i'm having a problem here right. i'm trying to fix this this not working that's not working what button should i push yeah. which level should i use what should i do but you're willing to continue the journey you're not stopping yeah, and that, that is something else because Anytime people get into an area where they're not agreeing a thing, that starts somewhere with something. Somebody disagree, well, fine, you know, but when we were out in the world, think about how that world treated us. Very badly, very unjustly, very unfairly, and you live with it. And you're somebody that you love, and be the mother or your father, your children, and you couldn't put up with something. I mean, I didn't say you should just walk and you kick and you spit in it. That's not what I'm saying. But before you get married, if you spend some time in prayer, if you have to stay there for a year, say, God, I want two or three witnesses for if this is the man or this is the woman. I'm not going to rush this because I don't want to get a divorce. And you say, and God going to reveal to you, say, God, I want in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Is this the man or is this the woman? 
And you don't know. That man or that woman may look so good and talk so good and dress so well and dance so well and cook so well and drive so well and all that. That, that might just be you walking by sight, not by faith, and you let your eyes go shopping for your heart. And that could be dangerous. Here you have a prophet under the old covenant. Three people have the Spirit of God upon them. The prophet, the king, and the priest assign those offices. Here you have Samuel going to Jesse's house to select a king to replace the first king of Israel, Saul. And he went there, he looking by his side, he see the eldest brother, he said, that's him. He said, no, that's not him. He went to the second brother, and that's not him either. Right down to the seven brothers, none of those. And he asked Jesse, is there any here? He said, well, just have the baby out in peace. They bring the baby, let me see. They bring the baby, that's him. So here is the prophet, he don't know. He is the prophet, the Spirit of God upon him. Only three people have the Spirit of God upon him. Here they're going to replace Judas Iscariot with an apostle. You have Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, all these apostles. God said them in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophet, thirdly teachers. After that, they give the work of the divinity the pastors. And you have all these apostles in the upper room. And they're going to replace Judas Iscariot. And none of these apostles don't know who it is. They put up these two men, Matthias and Judas. They put up these two men before God said, you know the heart of all men, you pick. But they don't, they're apostles and they don't know who it is. I said, God, you know the heart of all men. You pick who it is. And it fell on Matthias. And pick Matthias to replace the, take the place of Judas Iscariot. So you don't know. That man or that woman, a good trick sense, keep working for Satan. <laughs> Everything looking so good. And then you start walking by sight, not by faith. You're walking by the senses. We walk by faith, not by sight. And go to God. And sometimes the person who God sent you, you're not all excited about him or her. That's not really your type. Yeah, not your type, but it's the devil type. You know, and you like this person. You're moving by the senses. But God moved by the heart. You see, he know that man going to stay with you in the long run. He's going to be with you for the 25, 30, 50 years you're together. That woman, she's going to put up with you. With all your faults and all your, your, all your, your percentage that you're missing, the 25% that you're missing, she'll put up with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, that 25% that he's missing, she'll put up with you. Because God put that together. But you see, when you put it together, a friend introduces you, you meet him in a party, you meet him in some dance, both of you were drunk and both of you <laughs> making promises that you couldn't keep. And now your eyes open. You realize that you're wrong like a three dollar bill, <laughs> and you try to get out. And now you, and now the middle of it, the turn is the one suffering in the middle of it because you want to go because you didn't go to God. Now we're talking about Christian people out in the world that could do what they good. Well, please, you know. But you go to God and find out who it is. God, you know the heart of this man. You know the heart of this woman. I don't know. Did she put up a good show? He put up a good show. He talk a good talk. And somewhere there, Paul said they go into Rome. Everything was fine. It was a gentle breeze until they get out in the deep. The hurricanes start raging. When you get out in the deep, you see, it's when you get out in the deep, everything is fine. But when you when you get out in the deep and the hurricane raging, you, can your boat go through that hurricane? You know, and you have to put up a lot of things when you get inside of it. Are you making a commitment? Are you ready to keep this man in sickness and in health for better or for worse? Sometimes worse come before better. Sometimes sickness come before health. Sometimes poverty come before wealth. Are you willing to make that sign on the dotted line? What about the woman who is your blood for 12 years? If your wife have a your blood for 12 years, would you put up with her for 12 years? What about the man at the pool of a test for 38 years? Your husband sick for 30 years, getting in some car accident or being in the war, whatever it is, and you are, the, are, you, are you love big enough to handle that? He has two or three children from a previous relation. You have two or three from a previous Are you, you love big enough to handle your three plus her three plus both of you? You have enough spiritual money in your bank account to handle all that? You have enough love in your in your marital account to handle all that all this you have to consider if you, you're ready to take this race I mean ready I was real ready I tell people at all the time no I congregation I was real ready I, re I ready I put my hand in the plow and I never look back whatever come I ready to take out and I never look back hallelujah and, and, and pastor as you're speaking as you're talking about looking for that asking God and seeking God for the counsel you actually invoking that um god's perfect will and god's permissive will yeah. so because that you, you as i was listening to you you're trying to you were saying that this person who god have chosen will be able to go the long haul with you yeah. because you have seek god so he does not say that even if you have a perfect relationship uh, you know you find the right person if you wouldn't have hard times or you wouldn't have trouble mm. but the point is God, if God give you the person, mm. that person will stay with you yeah. and allow you to help you go through the hard times because the Bible says we will face persecution. Yeah, because that, that's part of it. In Job chapter 14, if you, you know, if you come in and get all this information, Job chapter 14, look at verse 1. Job chapter 14, look at verse 1. Man that is born of woman 
is of a few days and full of troubles. Say, so, no, you're going to have persecution. He said, be all the, you're going to have persecution. That's just the way it is. You see, you're going to have that. You prepare for it. You're going to fight. You're going to, you know, you look at, you could take analogies that you could use. You're going to be a boxer or a wrestler or whatever it is, some kind of contact sport you were playing. You're going to be playing basketball. You jump, somebody's going to knock you down. And you're going to, you have to prepare for it. You train for it. You see, you're going to be a boxer. Somebody's going to knock you. In. And you're training to take a big punch and get, <laughs> get right back up again. You're going to be in things. Sometimes things happen with your children. You have to be ready for it with your wife, with your in-laws and your outlaws. <laughs> Are you ready for all that? You're going to be a fight. You have to be a well-versed in your fighting. And you're going to have some problem. You, every day is not going to be smooth. You're living in a fool's paradise. The Bible says your adversary, not the adversary, your adversary. <laughs> you're going to have an adversary. <laughs> you're going to have it. If it does in your in-laws, it's going to be in your outlaws. It's going to be there. You're going to have some problem. On your job, some, you're going to have some adversary. People want to, and Satan come not but for the steal, to kill and to destroy. He's going to put a man in your wife's life to break up that marriage. He's going to put a woman in your husband's life to break up that marriage. That they came for that purpose. The thief come not but for the steal, to kill. So you will expect that. So you have to know what to do. You say, well, my husband is a good man. You know, we pray every morning. My wife is a godly woman. She walks with her Bible and she quotes scripture. That might be so. But her body isn't saved. His body isn't saved. When you're born again, you get a new spirit, but you didn't get a new body. So how could my husband do this to me? How could my wife do this to me? Well, her body isn't saved. You see, he got a new spirit, but he doesn't have a new, a new body. Paul said, I keep under my body. He didn't say, I put it under, I keep it under. You're going to have problems. You're going to have that body still want to drink, to smoke, to party, to sex. That body still want to do that. And if you're not in a place to keep that body on restriction, to suppress that body, you're going to be in some trouble. If you go to church one time a week for half an hour, get a cold snack, and then you all week long with the devil, it's going to be very difficult for you to submit and resist. Very difficult. You know, you come to church for one minute and for half an hour, for one hour, and then you go back. You spend one hour with the things of God and all week long with the devil. Now, if you feed your, your, your spirit the way you feed your body, you'll die. You feed your body three meals a day, seven days a week. That's 21 meals, and you feed your body. You feed your spirit one hour, one time a week. So your, your body... And the things of the world is so much more stronger than the things of the spirit. Because you come to, and most churches, you know it. I know it, God know it, and the devil know it. Most churches, you get a cold snack. The food that they sell, <laughs> a cold snack. Is that, is the nutritional content is, is close to zero. So you, you, you know much for drugs. You know much for gambling. You know much for partying. You know much for sex. You know much for lying and stealing. You know much because you don't have enough spiritual to buy. Gasoline. You don't have enough spiritual to go through the mm -hmm. desert. The desert's alive. You find your car in the middle of the desert and run out of gasoline. You know, it's only so much you could take. I don't care. I used to like to look at fights. I don't care how good a fight you was. I look at some of the best fighters in the world at the time. And I used to, that was my thing 10, 15, 20 years ago. And the best fighting, well, you get punched in the right place, you're going to fall. I don't care who you are. You name him, he get punched, he or she get punched. Not she, but have she now. But back then was mostly men. You get punched in the right place, you're going to fall. So I don't care how good or full of the Holy Ghost you are, you get punched in the right place, you're going to fall. Hallelujah. You get in the wrong environment with gambling, with smoking, with partying, with sexing, with what, with lying or whatever it is, you get in that environment, you'll fall. Hallelujah. You'll fall. Indeed. And, and you know, so, so Pastor, that was what I was saying before, with you, you always quote in the scripture. And what I've realized in my walk with God, the word of God, there is something about reading the Bible itself. Yeah, yeah a pastor could take a few lines and take a scripture from here and start talking and start going along with a piece of note in his hand and saying some stuff. Yeah, you could do that. But nothing like quoting scripture all day long mm. from one scripture to the mm. next, next to the next, next to the next, next to the next. There is nothing like that. When you finish, you are filled. Yes. When I come to, I, you, you feel full of something. You yeah. don't know what it is, mm. but it's harder for the world to convey something to you. Yeah. That yeah. has been my experience. Because they said there are words I hid in my heart that I wouldn't <laughs> sin. Now, to a hungry man, something bitter is sweet. In other words, if you're hungry, very hungry, and you all day long, your wife didn't prepare, you might find yourself on the island doing some work and you're very hungry. You'll take a slice of pizza, you'll do some sort of junk and like that. Now, when you come home to eat your good food that your wife prepared for you, your appetite isn't there anymore because you eat some junk out in the street. So, but the hungry man, something is bitter sweet. If you're hungry, you'll eat anything. So, you go to a church, you don't have anything spiritually inside you, you'll eat anything. Any junk, anybody tell you to take it down to Jones or Guyana, we could either take it because you're hungry. You see, to a hungry man, something bitter is sweet. 
But if you've been filled with the things of God, the minute somebody comes and says, uh-uh, can't do that. Uh-uh, not supposed to look at that. Don't keep no wicked thing before my eyes. Now you're talking to us the fools and uh-uh, be careful what you hear. What you hear will affect your faith. And you know what to do. It's not how to dodge this spiritual darts coming to you. You know how to play it out. But you don't know how to play it out. You just stand and they can punch, punch, punch. And then you're going to fall. Again, uh, uh, right. And pastor, what it is now, as we're talking, it's a brand new 2017, yeah. right? People believe that just because you're talking smart talk, mm. that's Bible. <laughs> or you're talking from a spiritual context, or you're using Bible in between. No. That's not God. No. It's not the Word of God. Mm. So some people like to go to a place where some man eloquent to talking all this bunch of stuff. You could talk a lot of stuff. If you are not quoting me Bible, 100% Bible, you're still not speaking the Word of God. That is where we get the meat from. Well, if, well, is it, a hundred percent word or fifty percent word. You you can't have if you take a glass of water and you put just one bit of something impurity in that whole glass of water. The glass is dirty. The water is dirty. It's not clean. So you can't have the world and you can't have the things of the world and the Bible together. Come out from among them. Be separate. Let us lay aside every way that so easy be set us. It's order the word of God is not. Well, who side you on? When Elijah went to begin the prophet of Baal, he said, if God be God, well, then let him be God. If Baal is God, then serve Baal. But you give me a little bit of Baal, a little bit of Baal. Then in Revelation, he said, I wish you were either hot or cold. But you look warm, you have some hot, and you some cold, so you look warm, so you have some of this and some of that. And because of that, I spew out of my mouth. I don't want you having some of this, or they have this. You're not filled with the word. Or you have this. So which side you on? Baal is God or God is God? Are you hot or are you cold? So make up your mind which side you want to be. And if you want to be Baal, well, go, go with Baal. If you want to be God, Baal. But you have a little bit of Baal and a little bit of God. So you're not hot or cold. You're lukewarm. So God doesn't like that. Hallelujah. He wants you to be like that. And look Amen. at this here in the book of Revelation 1. Revelation 1. and the, the, look, look at... um. Look, look, at the, look at the third verse. Little things like this, I will read and I will go to bed. I'll just chew on this like a chewing gum in my mouth. At <laughs> Revelation 1. Look at the third verse. Blessed is he that read it, and they that hear the word of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is on. So you're blessed for reading and you're blessed for hearing. You get, you're like going and coming. It's like a two-edged sword. Blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Both of them, you're blessed both times. So they're hearing it. So that's why we read it all the time. Read it, read it, because you know, reading the Bible in many places is a rarity. And also you keep reading all the time so people would hear faith coming by hearing, faith coming by hearing, faith coming by hearing. And you follow up with a lot of things so you know what to submit and resist. If more people, more marriage people will, whenever something goes wrong in the house, they'll quote a scripture to their wife or to your husband. I mean, the word would be that quick, would quiet everything wrong, but you don't know what to say. Nobody tell you what to do, how to submit, how to resist. So he says something, and you say something, and he curse, and then you curse, and he suck his teeth, you suck your teeth, you roll your eyes, and he roll, and it keep going higher and higher. And nobody know how to, a soft answer, turn away rat. And nobody know, didn't tell you what to say. You're not trained what to do. And you, you'd get out of hand on them. Then you go back, people come for counseling. Well, of course, we deal with people, people are people. And I say, what happened when you were in love? I mean, you couldn't live without each other. Now you can't live with each other. What's wrong? Where, where did this go wrong? What happened? Where did the thief come in? Yeah, yeah. Where, what happened? What happened? And then you, you find out, little by little, they start moving away from the things of God. They stop praying together. They stop telling each other to love each other. They stop going out on date together. They, stop, they start falling back. And they're not paying attention to things of God and they move abroad. And then there's a void, there's a vacuum, and Satan fill it. He fill it with looking at television, with calling friends and going places you have no going. And then you start dressing like the world and walking like them. And you couldn't tell the difference between the church and the world. Because the church get very worldly and the world get very churchy. And everybody's mixed up. They have this mulligan stone in your hand. And you see that, then they start to come back together and put things back together. But, but you have to remember all the time, you that are listening out there, that we came from married people. Adam and Eve was married. That's where we came from. So we have a good precedent. Then when God destroyed the old world, he had Noah, his wife, his three sons, and a three wife, and from those overspread the whole world. So we came from married people. <laughs> wow. You see? So we, we all over, overspread from married people. Look at this in, in the book of <clears throat> Genesis. And when you look at it, Abraham only had one wife. He tried to help God out with Sarah. Then you look at Moses, only had Zipporah. You look at Joseph in Egypt, he just had his wife in Egypt, and so on. So all these, we have a good precedent before us. Genesis <coughs> chapter 9. Nine. Okay. You see, we came from married people. When they destroyed the whole world, we start all over. We said it again. Genesis chapter 9, look at verses 18 and 19. 
So you have no excuse. You came from marriage people. That's where you came from. Adam and Eve was married. He went into his wife and had Cain and Abel and so on. And then when you cut the destroy everything to start again here with Noah. Um, Genesis 9, look at verse 18 and 19. And the sons of Noah that went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham is the father of Canaan. Of these sons of Noah, of them was the whole earth overspread. So I don't care where you're listening to this. You came here in Asia, in Africa, in, in Americas, in Europe, wherever you are. You come from married family. From them, the whole earth overspread. So wherever you listen to this, you come from married people. So where did you get it that you're not supposed to be married or then pull away from you? You just think about it. You just think about it. These people was in the ark for about five months or so, 150 days, five months or so. And they get out of the ark and they're going to replenish the whole earth after God destroy everything. Be fruit from it, but replenish it. So you come from families that are locked together in marriage. Something else. The next little facet of revelation is only married people can get in the ark. God Noah, his wife, his three sons and the three wives, Hallelujah. and from them overspread the whole earth. Glory to God. So you come from married people. So the reason why, and Solomon, who played a fool with all these set of women, he said something in the book of Proverbs. He get all these women. Somebody said, well, Solomon had a lot of women. Yeah, but they didn't tell you the price he paid for it. <laughs> Some drug dealer tell you you could make a lot of money selling yeah. drugs, but you didn't tell you how many people get killed, how many people incarcerated because of it. You see, he had all these women, but then he come get some sense in his head in the process of time. Let's see what that person have to say. All right, let's go on the line. Caller, good afternoon. Grace and peace, you're on, the, you're on the air. What's your question? Are you there? What's your question? All right. I guess that caller. All right, so we're going to open the phone <coughs> officially when we're ready. <laughs> so we're still having a little rapport with the pastor. Ferdinand is here. Every, you hear him in the morning at um, 6 o'clock every morning, and then you hear him again on Tuesday night and Thursday night at 8, 8 p.m., all about the Bible, scripture from scripture to scripture to scripture. Does say the Lord, so he's right here. And we normally do this segment every first Saturday of the month, but last week he was not able to. We had a miscommunication, so to speak, but everything is all right. So he's here this week and we're doing that. But as we were talking so much about the foundation of the church, the pillar of the church, married people, husbands, and wives, hallelujah, he's just giving us a little peace here and, and, and just reaffirming affirming what the scripture is saying about that strong covenant from God and giving us a little a little something that we can really be energized to follow in the foot of the Lord. Go but ahead, Pastor. Proverbs chapter 18 and Solomon who had all these women gave himself and all kind of mess. What he write here? Did God like God have a sense of humor? 18, look at verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife, not wives, wife, W-I-F-E, wife, find it a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. So maybe the reason why some people don't get favored the Lord because they don't have a wife. He who finds a wife find a good thing. Mm -hmm. Or the relationship be he who find a wife find a good. You don't have a thing, your wife is not a thing. You know, the people who put the Bible together, they put it like that. They educated people and think it's song good, you know. Maybe they, they complete the sentence who find a find a good thing. But who so find a wife find a good thing and you know, find favor. And, and find favor of the Lord. So sometimes because when you go back, God will bring back to Adam and Eve, they were married. Then you look at those in the ark, they were married. Then Abraham was married to Sarah. He tried to help God out with Hagar, mm -hmm. but he was married. If you look at it, he really loved only um, Sarah. Then his son Isaac only had Rebecca, had nobody else recorded. Then Jacob really only wanted, um, uh, not, not Leah, but he wanted Rachel. Rachel yeah. Just wanted Rachel, but they give him Leah, so he worked there and so on. But if you leave him alone, then we look at Joseph. All he had was the wife in Egypt, but he had Manasseh and Ephraim with, and so on. You look at all these. Moses only had. Zipporah, that's the only wife. So you have, a, you have a, a good record of it coming throughout. That's the only a wife. A cloud of witnesses. Yeah, a cloud of witnesses. You mm -hmm. have those. So you say, he will find a wife, find a going to obtain favor of the Lord. So if you, but maybe sometimes the reason why you don't get favor of the Lord, why you don't get priority and so on, why you don't sit in first class, is because you don't have a wife. He wants you to have a wife because he wants you to do what's right. You don't do it right. If you don't have a wife, but then you're having children outside of wedlock. And that's fornication. And he's not going to put up with that. God is not, the only thing he permitting is sex between husband and wife. Anything outside that, God did not permit you on your own. That child born retarded with Down syndrome, with the, born blind or dumb or deaf, that's you on your own. Because the Bible said the, the, the marriage bed is undefiled. undefiled. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4, 
the married bed. You're on your own. You could go and do it if you want, but you're only child born sick with a hole in the heart and born with all sort of mess. And that thing. That's you. You're on your own. But once you go in that bed and you're not married, Satan have a right to come into the bed and accommodate you and your wife. And the child born sick, born you know, the child is slow and all sort of foolishness they're talking about. Well, because you get on Satan territory and there's nothing God to do. You tie God hand. He tell you to do what to do. He give you some instruction what to do. Hebrews chapter 13 and look at verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. The whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Well, the word undefiled means clean. If the bed is defiled, means it's dirty. So if you go to bed, not being married and you conceive in that environment, all sin that a man sin is outside the body. The only sin that he sin against the body is fornication. So you're going to have sex outside of marriage you're on your own. You could go ahead and do it. Have yourself a ball, Paul. But you're going to pay. That's, that's the way the child born oh, all yeah, sort of yeah. messed up. We didn't know. You know, I come from a family like that. I mean, we eat the bread that the devil need because they didn't know. Mm-hmm. They didn't know. They're not yep. bad people who went out. They're yeah, going uh-huh. out to there and sin. But they just didn't know. And they paid the consequences. Thank God is mercy. Endure it. Otherwise, all of us could be killed and plunged straight into hell and there's nothing God could do about it because if God forgive your sin, he'll have to go into hell and forgive everybody else's sin. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Well, he's, there's billions of people in hell saying, I didn't know. So he had to go down to hell oh, and yeah, forgive yeah. all those in hell to forgive. So he can't do that. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the marriage bed is undefiled. So undefiled means it's clean. If you go to bed, you go on your own. You want to do that, you could get yourself in all your mess. And the child born with all sort of mess, running the street, joining gang, using drugs, and all kinds of things. It's because of that. Because nobody tells us anything. Nobody give us any instruction. You go to church, reading the Bible is a rarity. Nobody don't read no Bible. They just talk, talk, Hallelujah. talk. And nobody tell you anything. But if Hallelujah. you read, somebody put you in a place and you read the Bible and tell you what time is it, then we'll be better people for it. <clears throat> Definitely, <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Definitely indeed. Mm-hmm. 30 minutes after 3 o'clock, Pastor, are you ready to open the phone open lines? The phone, open the phone line. Open All the right, phone line. amen. 347-663-8638. So this forum here is a open phone where we ask bab- biblical questions and Pastor Fon is here to help us and to give us a viewpoint um, from his perspective as the Spirit of God lead on him to, to share the Word of God. So it's an open forum, any kind of question. But today we're really focusing on the marriage and stuff like that. And if you want counseling from the Pastor, you have a question you want to ask and if you want to get his view, his side of it, we right here for you guys according to the Word of God. Pastor, something very important. You know, the Word of God is telling us over and over Homongers, fornicators, whoever, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And and I don't know if people don't think well that well God is joking. No, he just say that there. That don't mean nothing. Because the emphasis is not about holiness, not about marriage in the church at all. It's just you love God. You receive Jesus. Reason Come none. in, just do what we're doing. Yeah. Well, but uh, God is saying that Well the, well again it's not reading the Bible we, my wife and I me, we were shocked that we went to some places as visitors you know and when you invite us certain places to go there and no, but not a single Bible in the church and what was conspicuously absent in Jones and Ghana no Bible and you go places no Bible you get a lot of fancy talk to and two four and four and four over those <laughs> up come back wrong yeah, yes 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 can't, yes, can't yes. fly you know, right, that kind right. of stuff it's fancy talk it sounds good you know but that kind of uh, encouraging talk is for like salesmen insurance salesmen car salesmen that kind of fancy talk yes, there, but that's yes. not the Bible that's not the Bible. You have to get the Bible. And Satan is not scared of that. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper. So Satan is not scared of those fancy talk. What goes up must come down. What goes around. He never fancy that. He, he'll encourage that kind of thing. And you go there, you want to have an itching ear and you want to hear that kind of stuff and it sounds good and very exciting. But, but it doesn't heal. It doesn't deliver. It doesn't set free. It doesn't do anything. It's just, you know, it's a food it's with, just, no, with, yeah, talk, no, yeah. with no nutritional mm-hmm, content, mm-hmm. no spiritual nutritional content. It doesn't have anything. You see, and nobody know, and you see, we, that God put you in a place, most of these places, not say, God have nothing to do with it, and they put you there, and you're comfortable. As Malcolm X says, you're suffering peacefully. You know, you're yes. going to hell, have a nice seat, going to hell, with a big grin on your face, and you're going straight to hell, because you're comfortable, you go there, you can go to parties, you can go on the parkway and liberty and wind down, you can go to boat ride, you can go to bus ride, you can have extramarital affair, you can go on cruise with somebody, that, and you could do all these things, and you feel comfortable, you go back to church, because they're not talking, because when you go back to church, the pastor says, what goes up must come down, what goes wrong, and if it feel good, do it, and you know, and you feel, oh, that's a good church, I want to be part of that church, you know, and, and because they make it doesn't address anything but if you read things like this look at this here in 1st Corinthians chapter 6 1st Corinthians chapter if you put this down and you read this and all that and their figures many people figure that hell doesn't exist 
like in the early years, you had this man saying that hell is not a physical or geographical location, a state of the mind. So, you know, I feel when I go to hell, the Bible says just confess your sin and everything will be fine. Or then, or then a good God is not going to make a bad hell. Well, it wasn't made for you to start with, make for the devil and his angels. First Corinthians chapter 6, look at verse 18. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man do it is without the body. He that commit fornication sin it against his own body. So when you fornicate, well, somebody says, well, I don't know what is fornication. Well, I'll tell you, we'll get to fornication a little while. I'll get to that in a little while. I'll get to fornication a little while. But look what he said. Every sin that you sin, and you talk about zillions of sin out there, the only sin they sin against your body is fornication. Well, what is fornication? Well, let's see what is fornication. Look at Acts, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and let's see what is fornication. Well, I don't know what is fornication. I told you about that. No, you could be doing it. And then there's a scripture in the, verse of Le, uh, the book of Leviticus 5 and verse 17. Say, if you sin a sin and you don't know it's a sin, you still have to pay. You still have to pay. So, well, I didn't know. Well, you just have to pay. First Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. It is commonly reported that there is fornication among you, and such fornication does so much name among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. You are puffed upon rather more that ye have done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I am verily am absent in body and present in spirit, and judge already as though I were present concerning him that done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord, you deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So here's a young man living with his father's wife. He's not married living to her. That's fornication. Look at another fornication. Look at the book of Jude. Small book before Revelation. Small book before Revelation. The book of Jude. What is fornication? Well, let's find out what is fornication. You might be doing it and not know, not aware of it. And you arrive in hell. What am I doing here? She's a grown woman. I'm a grown man. And we're not hurting anybody. She <laughs> consent. I consent. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you're breaking laws. You're breaking Bible laws. Jude chapter 1. And let's read a few verses. Jude chapter 1. It's a one chapter book. Pick it out verse 1. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and call. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I give out the letter to write unto you of the common salvation, it is needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you shall earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. For there are certain men crept in on a way who were before of all order into this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once know this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believe not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved into everlasting chains and the darkness unto the judgment of that great day. Look at the seventh verse. He must sudden out the moron, the cities about them, and in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, gone after strange flesh, and set forth an example of suffering of the vengeance of eternal fire. So the people in Sodom and Gomorrah was men going to bed with men. So when women go to bed with women and men go to bed with women, that's fornication. So if Strange you don't know what flesh. it is, if you don't know what it is, let's see another one for those of you who live in this contrary lifestyle and think it's all right. It's not all right. Sometimes the reason why you can't get healed, the reason why you can't be delivered, the reason why money wouldn't come, the reason why a lot of things will happen, because you don't. Nobody tell you anything. Your pastor don't say anything. He, he, sometimes he's part of the problem. He's having extramarital affairs. He's having affairs with people in front. Sometimes he's contrary. He have going to bed with another man or with another woman. And he sometimes is part of the problem. Well, God hear it, not sinners. Look at this in Romans chapter we want to look at verse 18 for the wrath of God right you could stop right here the wrath of God look up that word wrath and see what it means for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which we know of God is manifested in them for God showed it unto them for the invisible thing from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even the eternal power and Godhead here without excuse because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but they mm -hmm. became vain in their imagination, and the foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools who changed the glory of the uncorruptible God in an image made like corruptible man, like birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up unto the uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, which is blessed forevermore. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affection, even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burning the lust one towards another, men with men working that which is unseemly, received to themselves the recompense of the which was meet. Even as they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. 
being filled with all unrighteousness and fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of all envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient parent, without understanding, covenant breaker, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God are they which commit such thing are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 38 minutes after this other side of 3 o'clock, it's Choice Radio. Your life, your salvation, your choice. And we are here to, to just um, reason with you. And as we start the new year, we really, really want to let you understand the word of God is true. And the word of God is real. And we as followers of Jesus, we want to start on this new year on the right footing in all areas as it relates to the word of God. Amen. And like I said, it's important to be in a Bible believing church where the preacher man is preaching from the Bible, from the word. Hallelujah. Scripture after scripture. There is something about reading the scripture itself. There is something about it. I just my experience. When you read the Bible, the more you read, the Bible fills you up spiritually. Amen. So the phone is open. We we really talking about marriage today and focusing on how important it is to God or to any man who wants to inherit the kingdom of God that we align ourselves first in marriage and everything that relates to um you know the the the, the, the flesh. Amen. Yeah, the most important decision you're going to make is getting married. Take some time. You find yourself a good church and ask God. Because sometimes the first church that comes to your place doesn't necessarily mean that it could be so, may not be so. But ask God because that decision you're making, those children, because those children could also lengthen your days or shorten your days if you have the wrong set of children. You got married and you told some people, you know it, I know it, God know it, and the devil know it. You get into the wrong marriage, you have hell on earth with a big H. <laughs> because you're going to do the wrong marriage. So you need to take some time. Go take some time. Spend some time with God. Say, God, I'm going to wait for a whole year if I have to, to find out if this is the person. I want you to confirm it with two or three witnesses. Let me know if this is the man or this is the woman. I don't want... I was out in that world. I make a lot of dumb, stupid mistakes. I did a lot of things I didn't know any better. Now I'm coming to you to show me who this person is. And so you have to wait a year. I mean, if it two, even if it worked for two years on your knees and be sure that this is the person. That once we get together, we tell that was part. And God going to protect your health, protect his health. All you going to live together, have a long life together, enjoy your children and so on. But the worst thing you want to do is to get in marriage somewhere midway through it. You get very sick or your wife get very sick or she die and leave it with the three or four kids or he die and leave it with your kids and you have to remarry to somebody else and they're treating your children and the children are not happy in that relationship. And no matter who you marry to or who she married to, nobody's happy about it. It's a mess. All that Satan plan. The thief come not want to steal, yeah, to kill, yeah, and yeah. destroy. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, see, but if with, with long life, I'll satisfy you. You see, you get it with long life, I'll satisfy you. That's a, that's a promise. Long life is a promise of God. If you didn't live long, well, then you didn't know something because we didn't know, we didn't know. You get on Satan territory and he destroy you because he'll do that. Because that's what he came to do, to kill, to steal, and destroy. So you go to God and he protect both of you will live long life. 80 years is a good time on, on the one side and 120 years on the high side. With long life, of, but you get out and Satan tell him, he'll kill him. The young man who was having fear with his father's wife, kill him. Young man, put him over to Satan, let Satan kill him. So you see, you can get on Satan territory and he'll be good at that. He know how to kill. He have the Hallelujah. he have the contract for death. Hallelujah. Three four seven six six three eight six three. The phone is open. Pastor Ferdinand is here, and we know it's a it's a topic that definitely is gonna 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 you know cause you to cringe in your seat. But it's the reality of the Word of God. Hallelujah. So we need to make sure we're on the right side with the Word of God. Hallelujah. God will give us the strength to do what is right as we continue to run this race that is set before us. So the question about marriage, we hear the phone is open. Three four seven. 663863 it already 343 um 340 the time is really moving fast so 347 663 8638 don't be shy don't be intimidated amen and the thing about god is if you you can cherry your forgiveness is there for you and you continue your life you begin a new walk we have an advocate with the father so what have happened before what happened last year whatever mistake you make we thank god that we're in the land of the living amen. and you are hearing the information right from the bible pastor is not just talking off his head he's quoting your scriptures and we're reading the counsel of god 
God together so you can start a brand new life in 2017 as we look on to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Pastor. First again. Corinthians chapter 7, look at verse 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Well, when you read that part of it, that's one part of it is because of the persecution and so on. But the second verse is this, nevertheless, to avoid fornication. You see, at all costs, you want you to avoid fornication. That every man, black man, white man, male man, female man, young man, old man, rich man, poor man, every man, don't care who you are, nobody's exempt. That every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. To avoid fornication at all costs. And that's one of the most prevalent things you have out in the communities, you know, people living together, just having a fear outside and just think it's all right, you know. No, the pleasures of sin for a season. You have the piper to pay. You're going to pay through your children, you're uh, going to pay through your mm, head. Yeah, not to cut you, but, um, and as you said, nevertheless, mm. to avoid fornication, mm. you know, what, what really came to me as he said, nevertheless, he's trying to say, sometimes a person might be wavering between opinion and keep going back and forth. Yeah. You want to make sure, you want to make sure. Mm. Yes, it's good to want to make sure, but because you have this desire, yeah. it's important to put your trust in God, mm. believe God, mm. that you first want to please God right. by doing what is right with God. Yeah. Amen. So he said, nevertheless, yeah. to avoid it, yeah. to make sure you're not in fornication, let every man have his own his yeah. own wife. Go ahead. You yeah, see, and, and, and dainty meat is deceitful. You see, that it tastes good, it looks good, it smells good, and everything looking good for it, but it's deceitful. You see, dainty meat is deceitful. You see, and the person may look so good and he talks so good and everything you see me right, man. He's from what I was in the same country. I know his mother, know my father, know my brother, know his sister. Everything, every piece of them will be fitting well. But all that could be together and still be wrong like a three dollar bill. So it's not because of that, you know, Satan will set all that up for you know, we talk the same language, you know, about some of the local colloquialism, we could quote these things together. That may be so, it may be so. But that's not what you use for your twelve inches. Nevertheless, to avoid it. Upon let every man, but take some time and go to God in it. Take some time and go to God find you because God knows. I mean, this is a facet of revelation that here you have. Look at this in the book. Let's, let's read it in the book of Acts. Look at, look, at the, look at this. The book of Acts, chapter 1. Look at something in the book of Acts, chapter 1. And no, these are apostles. They're apostles. God gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. He gave them the. And He set them in the church first apostles. These are the highest ministry gift. And look at this here. Just look at this facet of Revelation. Acts chapter 1, look at verse 13. And they were come up, they went up in the upper room, where aboard, look at who is in the upper room. Peter, and James, and John, and Andrew, and Philip, and Thomas, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Lord, Judas the brother of James. All they continued in prayer and supplication with a woman, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. In those days, Peter stepped in the midst of his disciples and said unto them, The number together were about 120. Now, all these high officials in the upper room, it doesn't get any higher than that with that amount of apostle. Now they're going to select somebody to replace Judas Iscariot. I'll go down to the 20th verse. As it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and let his bishop let another take. Wherefore, of these men which have company with us all the time that the Lord Jesus has went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day in which he was taken from us, one must be ordained to be witness with us of the resurrection. And they appoint two, Joseph called Basabab, who was surnamed Jesus and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, thou knowest the heart of all men. Thou knowest the heart of all men. Thou know is the heart of all men. All these high officials, yeah. they don't know who it is. Thou know is the heart of all men. Show whether of these two thou hast, thou hast chosen. Thou hast chosen. Not we, thou hast chosen. Thou hast chosen. And they take part, they take part of the ministry and apostleship by which Judas by transgression fell, that might go on to his place. Look at the 26th verse. And they give order a lot, and the lot fall upon Matthias, and was numbered with the left. So none of these high officials could tell who it is. Look at how many apostles in the upper room. Look at many apostles, not, not one of them had, could tell who it is. You see that? Only God knows who, who, who are it is. That's why you could be there. Everybody could be there. This higher physical apostle, this and prophet, this and this. all. He said, no, 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 no. no. Only God knows. And he says, sometimes somebody in your church tell it so and so. Sometimes, yes. But in the mouth of two or three witnesses, that they were, look how many witnesses there. None of them could tell. These are apostles. None of them could tell. God, you know the heart. And God let it fall on Matthias, and Matthias take the place of Judas Iscariot. Bro, that's a great Hallelujah. facet of revelation. You find they don't know. Only God knows. 
who you might be looking at from your country or who your, your co-worker, your fellow worker, or your, or your community, or a person from your community and all that. It might be so. It might be so. But not necessarily so. God is the one who knows the heart of that Hallelujah. person. Hallelujah. Amen. And Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. 47 minutes after 3. Choice Radio 347-663-8638. It's a sobering topic. It's a sobering conversation. But guess what? The Word of God is sobering. The Bible said to be vigilant and sober. So whatever is sobering is really what is about the kingdom of heaven. And, um, you know, uh, I was speaking to a, a man called the radio a couple of times. He say he listened to you a long time, but he's telling me... um. Well, um, he has some things to tell me, but um, he listened to me and he realized, you know, whatever book I'm reading from the King James, and um, you know, um, he has some information that, he, you know, different things, and and um, but I cannot find it. Whatever information he's given me, he says it's from God, but he cannot find it. In the other words, he's saying, I cannot find it. He mm. have a book, whatever book he's reading. So I say, well, quote me the scriptures. He's not quoting me the scriptures, but he's just telling me it's from God. And he hear me talking about the King James Bible and all this stuff. Mm. <laughs> but as you said, if it's good for the king, it's good enough for me. It's good for you. <laughs> well, listen to these people. They're just going up the down says All that kind of foolishness that take people down to Jonestown Gay. And I listen to all kind of foolishness. Any clown, any idiot could go on the internet, put up all kind of stuff up there, all kind of crazy stuff. And you spend all the time, you, you just you just be simple. Sometimes God needs a stupid person, a fool like me, or an kid. He needs somebody like me. You're too smart for yourself. Now, I would just look at the Bible here in um, Acts chapter 4. You, you could all this book in the library, fine, it's good to have knowledge. It's good to have knowledge. It's good to have some information. You know, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge, knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, charity. Add these things to your faith, fine. Or what kind of knowledge? Sometimes all the thing that you 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 accumulating doesn't mean anything. In here, in Acts chapter four, I will just conclude with this. Look at the, look at the twelve verse. Neither is this salvation any any other, mm -hmm. for is none other name under given among, under heaven given among men whereby he may be saved. So all that all that sort of stuff you talk about, you you can't get saved by Buddha, Hare Krishna, Muhammad, education, money, color, skin, and all that. You can't get saved by it. So you can commit all that. You die going straight to hell. So it's only one name that's going to get you in heaven. Look at it. Look at verse twelve. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 mm -hmm. neither is yeah. there salvation in any other it's not in Moses it's not in Isaiah it's not in Jeremiah it's not in Isaiah it's not in any of these guys none of them not in Paul not in Peter not in, not in James not in Bartholomew it's none of them no other name no other name so I will conclude you, you know, all that sort of books you're piling up and all that research you're doing doesn't mean anything ever learning and never come to a conclusion of the truth look at it there's none other there's salvation in none other there is none other name given under heaven given among men whereby he must be saved. You don't, you can't prove it. That's it. Everything else is secondary. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everything else is secondary or no dairy at all. Mm -hmm. No dairy at all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, 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 and um, you know, it's, it's important that we understand that there are many gospels out there. There are many people preaching a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff up there, out there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's only one gospel of the kingdom the kingdom of God one gospel of the kingdom amen so you talk a lot of talk but is it the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah we're talking about the kingdom of heaven on choice radio and that is conveyed in the word of God hallelujah many people say they believe in God but which God yeah, which one which God you know like pastor we just hear because in God we church Mm. With church, but which God are they talking about? They don't believe in the same God that, yeah. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Satan, Satan's, Satan's God of this yeah, world. Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, what's your question? Peace and truth. Okay, I guess I wanted to uh, address some of the contradictions in the Bible. And I guess that's why a lot of people go to other books, is because they find things that are not uh, in sync with what it should be. For example, Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter 6 verse 19 versus Genesis chapter 7 2 uh -huh. that's a contradiction it says how many animals you know did uh, God I guess tell Noah to load on the ark so then when you read the other Genesis 7 2 it gives a different which, which number of animals I, and that's just I, one example I, let's go to you know, we have other examples also so uh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on wait wait wait, wait 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 before you go further are you a believer in the Bible or you're not a believer in the Bible 
Of, of course, yes, I'm a born again Christian because of Choice Radio. I became a born again Christian, Hallelujah. but that doesn't stop me there. I have to continue reading the Bible, searching, and, and making sure. You know, mm -hmm. and so when I read, I say, wait a minute, there's contradictions all over the place. I've mocked them. I've, I've, I've gone crazy saying, what is going on? Why? <laughs> right. Okay. L listen. I Exodus uh -huh. Uh -huh. 20, 1 mm -hmm. through 17 versus Exodus 34, 1 and 14 through 28. What are the real Ten Commandments? It gives you one set of commandments. And then when you read the next one, it gives you a total different set of commandments, which tells me that the Bible was written by... It, it looks like it's written by two different people or some, something's happening. I don't know why, <laughs> you know? And there's, there's more, there's more. Samuel, I found contradiction. In Kings, I found contradictions. I, loads of them. I've just okay. highlighted them. And I'm like, they're contradictions. So right, what's right, the real story? Right. Now, let me say this to you, my beloved. If you go looking for something, you're going to find it. He that come to God must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, a thing might look to you as a contradiction. If we look further in the realm of the spirit, God can show you clearly that these things are saying the same things. But there might be variations about it that elaborate further or deeper about that same thing that you're talking about. But like I said, once you believe in Jesus and you believe the word of God is inspired by God, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, you have to stand on that word that nobody could write anything like that and ask God to give you the clarity by the Holy Spirit. So I, I listen to you and I like your enthusiasm. I like your fire and we need to have fire. We don't just follow anything. But I will tell you, take your time with the Lord and keep going to him and say, Father, I want to understand this. I want to see this word as one word. Hallelujah. Help my understanding. Help me to understand it. And when he know that you're mature, and he see that you stop looking for contradiction, but you start looking for completion in Christ, God will just give you revelation after revelation after revelation. He's going to join that Bible all the way through as a garment you can put on you on God's side and nothing can fall on you. So I thank you so much. I mean, Pastor might have want to say something. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know what I'd have to do with Jesus Christ. All that is to get you away from Jesus Christ. We just read a scripture from the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. The salvation on it. If you look at contradiction and that, isn't it? They have all kind of different forms of the Bible. I have about three or four different <laughs> versions of the Bible. But what that have to do with Jesus Christ? The Spirit of God is not twins. So it may, they might have people writing certain things in the Bible, and uh, they might be educated people, but they're not spiritual people. Sometimes the intentions are good, but they don't have the Spirit of God. They, they, they get from universities and they take this Bible from, they could understand the Greek and the Hebrew language. They take it from the Greek and they, they bring it into English and sometimes bring it over. It doesn't have words, sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes they don't have corresponding words to convey the thought. So they bring it from the Hebrew and from the Greek over into this language and it look like, well, this guy from Italy transmit and come over here. It doesn't say the same thing. This guy from Russia transmit the Bible and it's saying something else. And this guy now is from Africa. He trans sometimes the, the language that they come from, they doesn't have words that correspond to say what they want to say. Sometimes the intention are good. Sometimes Satan behind it. I know that. But sometimes the intention are good, but they just don't have the words to convey the thought. And sometimes they leave certain things hanging. For instance, we just read a while ago, he who find a wife find a good thing. Well, the, the original thing doesn't say things. He find a wife find a good, you know. But you, you, these things could be there. But if you seek God, as Minister Straker was saying, you'll find Him. The Holy Ghost is not twins. And sometimes because of people, the way the education. Now, when you look at the four Gospels, the way Matthew write is different from Mark, is different from Luke, is different from John. Mm -hmm. They all write different. They're different. Hallelujah. They all. But when you add it up, two and two equal four. But they're different kinds of writer. You see, John um, Matthew seen him royal seen him royalty but Mark now seen him as a servant no Luke seen him as a man as God man John seen him as divine you know but all of them writing all of them is the same Holy Spirit behind it but just the way they write right so sometimes the people who translate from Europe and from different parts of the world they translate the Bible sometimes the, the words that they have in their language it, they couldn't convey the thought the way they would like to and sometimes they're not spiritual people they're educated people glory and to they, God and they can't convey hallelujah they, they doesn't have the spirit of God but they have the knowledge but it does have the spirit <laughs> yeah. you know so you don't okay, be my mad, final point don't, my, don't, final, my final point uh -huh. will be go ahead 
the, the Bible, you, we say that the Bible is the inspired Word of God, right? They were inspired, they wrote the information in. But once something is revealed to someone, okay, by the, the, the Word were revealed to Moses or to Abraham or to whomever, once it's revealed to that person, that's a revelation. But once it's re- given to other people, it's no longer revelation. It's hearsay, isn't it? No, well, no, no, but that, that, you're getting the next area now. No, the, the original manuscript will be given, will be divine. But sometimes, the, as I said, why do so many people copying it, taking it from the original? But sometimes they're not spiritual. Sometimes they don't have the words in the vocabulary to convey the thought. So they, how some, can they could we be, they take could, this they, Bible for the final no. word of God? The final, well, taking no, 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 it literally no, wait a minute, for the wait a minute, final wait a minute, word of God. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not that they, sometimes Satan could be behind it. He could be behind it to, to pervert it. Sometimes yet. But sometimes the people, the intentions are good, educated people, but they don't have, they couldn't convey the thought the way it was meant um, spiritually. Yes, to go over. You know, now uh, look at something. Look at, look at this. We close, we run out of time. Let's mm-hmm. look at this. Now when you look at the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they say that Jesus was put on the cross from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Now, when you look at Mark, Mark says from the third hour. Yes, well, so, exactly. Wait, I saw wait, that wait, also. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you see, you, 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 you're using up the time, time is up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You see, so three of them saying it's from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. But when you look at Mark, Mark says from the third hour to the ninth hour. Well, somebody's lying. No, they're not. Back then, they used Roman numerals, and you put dash one, and then two, dash two, three, and so on. When it's four, you put dash plus a V is four. When it's five, you put a V. Mm-hmm. When it's six, you put a V and one. So the way the translator take it up, the, 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 the six look like, a, like, like three. And he, tr- he considered that, but it, it consistent all the time is, is from the sixth hour to the ninth. But when you deal with Roman numerals, the person who translate it, they take it from the third hour because it dash three t- dash and so on. But when you put five and, and the dash, it look like third, but it's really the sixth hour to the ninth hour. So you could have things that are something that the intentions are good. The intentions are good, but sometimes you just don't have the spirit of God. You have mm-hmm. knowledge, but you don't have the spirit of God. Hallelujah. You see? And then you have... So then how can we... Ta- how then can we know what parts of this Bible are true and what parts are because errors, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, no, 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 nothing is fake. No, no, you, you have the Spirit of God. Yeah, Spirit wrong, of God going to lead you. Time, time, fake. time is up. Let me just read it before we come. If we, no time, more time. Why didn't you call earlier? I don't know why. You called when the last. Don't do. Yeah, well, I, think, I, I think the thought we said. Yeah. All right. Look speak, at look yeah. at this here. Listen to this in in uh, Galatians chapter one. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you on to the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another gospel, but there's some that will trouble you, which will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, which you have, pre- which you have heard, let him be a curse. As I said before, I said now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, let him be a curse. If you preach any other, so it's only one gospel. So we time's up. We couldn't go any further. The time is up. And God bless you. Thank you so much for calling. And Thank you. To, all right. God bless you. Indeed. Amen. So, Pastor, what is beautiful about this? She's enthused about the word of God. Yeah. She's excited and she wants to dot every I, cross <laughs> every T. But it's very important for every believer to understand the Holy Spirit. He is the one who leads you into all truth. Now, hear what I'm saying. You might be very whatever you are and trying to you hear people say stuff and you're trying to validate stuff. But your validation must be first rooted in God, that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the Son of God. And I believe every word. Then he is going to manifest what is relevant to you yeah. as you go along so let's understand that mm-hmm. so i understand your fire and that's what i i am serious about it what a lot yeah <laughs> but let us stay with jesus and jesus will lead you into all truth pastor any final words the evangelist the <laughs> pastor comes up next because she's going to give the salvation prayer amen hallelujah father we just thank you for this opportunity and privilege. We thank you for your word that is still alive and powerful and sharp and hallelujah. Jesus, we give you all praise on and glory for this lord in jesus name amen before amen. Uh, yeah you say amen for the for the listeners that is listening mm. that is married mm. just a final short word mm. hallelujah of exhortation to them as we convey this right. conversation married ha- being married husband love your wives as Christ loved the church and give himself it 
and you wives be obedient to your own husband there's rank in the kingdom father god jesus husband wife children so if you follow that i mean you, you get everybody where they're supposed to be everything will be fine husband love your wife as kind of but wife be obedient on you submit yourselves unto one to another it doesn't mean you have to be a doormat just mean he has his place you have your place you yield to him he yield to you and everything going to be fine Well, we wish you could go on one talk more about yes. it but i mean that's Hallelujah. about putting a nutshell husband in love Jesus your wife name. love i never hear somebody get divorced for being too much in love <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good revelation yeah, yeah. there and this man love me too much this man love me too much i want a divorce i, I can't take the love too much love too much <laughs> love too much love too much love from this woman i want a divorce i never hear that hey, jesus name thank amen. you so much pastor we appreciate you amen. thank you so much god amen. bless you amen, amen. thank right. you so much Bye-bye. yes all right All right, brethren out there in Radio Land, we thank you so much as we get ready for Pastor Shelly, Shelly, Shelly Lashley coming up next. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my life. I thank you for Pastor Ferdinand. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have us come together to learn your word and study your word and be so excited about Jesus Christ, who is Lord. So we bless his holy name today on Church Radio. And every listener, I want you to keep listening. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the pastor coming up next, she's going to invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord. Lord and Savior. Let me also give you Pastor Frodin an information because uh, you know I want people to understand the foundation of the word of God has to be in the Bible. Wherever you go, we have to be quoting scriptures, quoting the Bible. Pastor Frodin is located at um 1539-1547 Pitkin and Strauss Avenue. Pitkin and Strauss Avenue. 1539-1547 and they have three services on on um on um on Sunday 10 a.m., 11:30 and 1 p.m. and all about the word of God. The word of God. Open the scripture, reading, quoting scripture. Hallelujah. The next pastor we have coming up next when you see her robe when she dress up for the to preach for the Lord, long robe and she preach the holiness of God and we give God glory, honor and praise on Choice Radio as we build up this army for the Lord in the last days. So be blessed of the Lord as she come to you next in the name of Jesus. We love you and Jesus Christ is Lord. Be blessed of the Lord, be encouraged in your faith as we run this race that is set before us in Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen and my wife I love you. Have a good afternoon. God bless you.